Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. My name is Aditya and on this channel I talk about Kubernetes, blockchain, software in general. And in today's video, we are going to set up IPFS on our local machine. So for today's demonstration, I am going to use Ubuntu as my host machine where I will be setting the IPFS node. And we will also going to see various command line options that are there in the IPFS. So without any further ado, let's start the video. So right now you can see I'm in my Ubuntu shell and if I show you uh, the user or the U name, you can see that I am using uh, Linux and Ubuntu is my uh, host OS. So now let's quickly download the IPFS binary. So for that I'll go to my browser and we'll search for this IPFS distributions and from there we have to just download the Kubo binary. So Kubo binary is uh, is a go ipfs client that we can use to interact with the other nodes or to any ipfs operation so for now since i'm running this on the ubuntu so i will use the linux binary and uh, the type of architecture uh, my cpu architecture is 64 bit so i'll use this one and i'll what i'll do i'll just simply copy the link and then we can do just w get to download the binary so here i can just go and i can just w get and this should download the binary in my local machine. Okay, so the binary has been downloaded. Now we can simply go and you know untar this. So I'll just simply extract this using tar hyphen xvf and I'll give the name which is this one in my case. So this will extract uh, all the thing in this Kubo directory and if you see here we have this Kubo directory and what I'll do is I'll just do ls on this Kubo directory. So here you can see that we have this install.sh and we also have this IPFS binary. And now we can just move this IPFS binary to a local path file system so that we can access it from anywhere. So what I'll do I'll just do, move this binary and this is present in Kubo. Uh, the binary name is IPFS and I'll just move this to slash user local bin I can move this binary here and now if I do IPFS hyphen hyphen version let's see it should work so you can see that uh, I am able to run the IPFS command uh, since I moved this binary to my path variable okay so now uh, we have the binary here and now we can just initialize our IPFS node and after that we can start that IPFS node. So what I'll do is I'll just do IPFS in it and uh, if you are running this within some server like within some data center then you can pass this hyphen hyphen profile flag as well like profile equal to server. So for now I'll just use IPFS in it and I'll just run this. So you can see that I got my identity like the peer identity and uh, that it is initialized at this location. So if we go to this location and uh, let's see what all we have here. So you can see we have this config file. We have some other uh, files as well, other folders as like this is the block where actual blocks are kept. Then we have this data stored folder where the indexes for those files that we store through IPFS, those are stored. Let's see the config file first. So I'll do just, uh, I'll just open this here. So I can do vi config and let's see uh, what all section it has. So it has, if you see the first section, the first section is the addresses section where it is uh, telling about the addresses uh, that are available for the various services. So you can see that there is this API uh, endpoint which you can use to access the API. Then there is a gateway endpoint or which the gateway will be exposed. Then you can see some list of you know uh, swarm, uh, uh, swarm peers or the peers uh, or the swarm nodes. Then you have some bootstrap nodes as well. Uh, and the one thing that I just wanted to show you is identity section. So let's search for that. Okay, I think I have to go manually. Yep, so here you can see this is the identity section and here you can see my peer ID and the private key against that particular uh, key. So now uh, we are able to see some of the configuration and now we, what we can do is we can basically uh, create a 
a service, a system D service, so that we can run this IPFS node in the background. So one way of running this IPFS node is like you can simply do IPFS daemon, and uh, what this will do is it will run this uh, uh, it, it it will run this program here itself. So you can see it has started this program, and uh, it's showing you a bunch of other details like on what uh, ports uh, it is listening to. So for now, what I'll do is I'll just create a system D service, and I'll just run this. IPFS using that service. So what I can do is I can so I'll just create a file here. I will do sudo touch and I'll just create a file uh, in the system d slash system folder and I'll just call this service as IPFS hyphen node service. I'll just run this. Now this is there. If I do ls here, uh, let's do ls here. So we should be able to see that IPFS service somewhere here. So here you can see that we have the IPFS server service. And now let's quickly uh, uh, create a system D service. So I'll just open this. And uh, I have already created the service. So the interesting thing uh, to note here is that you can see that exit start command where you can see uh, where, where you have to give the path where your IPFS binary is present. And in this case, uh, if you remember, initially we moved this binary to this particular location. And from there, we are running this command, which is IPFS daemon. Same goes for the exit load uh, as well. Uh, we, are, you know, we are also giving the same command to run when we did the system uh, the service restart. So now I think this is good here. We have the service and now we can just you know enable this service. So what I'll do, I'll just do system or let it run this by sudo system ctl. Uh, we can just do you know start and the name of the service which is IPFS IPFS node service. So now we have to first reload the system D daemon. So I just reload this quickly. And now we can just start the service. And let's see if the service actually started or not. So we can do, uh, we can just run a status command here. And uh, cool, we can see like the service is running fine. And now our node is up. And uh, it might be connected to some other peer or other nodes in the network. So let's try to see what all those peers are. And for that, we'll use the IPFS command line to do that. So since our node is up, uh, we can just do first IPFS you know, uh, identity. So we can see like what is the current the identity for this particular node. So if I run this IPFS ID, it will show me the node ID and the public key, and it will show me some other uh, addresses as well. It will show you the, the protocol version, what is uh, currently running on. And what's the you know cube kubo or the ipfs client version now uh, let's do one more thing let's see what all uh, other ipfs node uh, this node is connected to so what i can do i can just run this this beautiful command ipfs swarm peers so we can see that it has connected to bunch of nodes and these are the endpoint of those nodes or the peer uh, that are that this node has connected to. So you can see that this has connected to all these nodes and it's exchanging the data using uh, with them. So now let's try to add some data to that IPFS node. So for this, what I'll do is I'll just you know write something to this IPFS. Let's say some hello world. So I, I'm just trying to uh, store some data to the IPFS and what I'm trying to store is hello world. So what I'll do is I'll just pipe this to IPFS IPFS add command and this should do the job. So you can see that it added that record, it added basically the text, and now we got the CIDs. And if you don't know the CID, so in IPFS, uh, the data is located through the CID, which is the content ID, not through the URL where in traditional systems you might have seen that you have to give the entire path where that file is present or entire url is present uh, you have to give the location of that and then only you can access that file but in the case of ipfs you have to give the content id 
and this content id is the hash of the content so it will be same for a similar input like if you give the same input then the output will always be same okay now we have added this content uh, to the ipfs node and uh, we got the hash as well or the cid as well now we can just run this ipfs cat command and we have to just pass the ipfs or the cid here so if i just pass the cid it should show me the content here so we can see that we got the content back again let's do one more thing let's create a file here i'll just move out of this directory and what i'll do is i'll just create a file let's say what all files we have so i'll just create a file let's say and uh, echo i'll call this as aditya and what i'll do is i'll just store this file now so let me call this as you know aditya dot let's say txt and let's see if this file has the content or not so this has the content and now let's try to add this file so i'll do what i have to do i put ipfs add and then the file name so in this case the file name is aditya.txt let's try to add this yep so we were successfully able to add this and we can do the cat ipfs cat against this and we should see the actual content here so if i do ipfs cat we should see the water we stored in that file and that file we pushed to the ipfs node now one thing to note here is that in ipfs whenever you, you run the ipfs node you have to do the pinning as well like you have to do the data pinning so that it's not collected by the garbage collectors or you know ipfs garbage collector where it will you know clean up all the dangling um, all that all the dangling data or the records so for that whenever you will run this ipfs add command it will automatically pin your data so which means that your data will not be removed from your node and this pinning will happen only only to your node like this data will not be replicated but it will be pinned within a node so there is a command to see like what all pins we have and if i do ipfs i think it's pin pin ls it should show you what all records were pinned and if i try to find this record uh, that we you know added using that ipfs add command we should see it somewhere here so i think this is the record let's do one thing let's do a grab here so that we don't miss it so here you can see that we were able to see this record because this record was automatically pinned like we are just seeing the what all uh, records are pinned what all files are pinned and uh, that's why this file is uh, you know it's coming under the ipfs pin ls command okay so let's say you want to add uh, some special some specific content which is which was not pinned to your uh, uh, to your node so you can do it so let's say if i want to pin this uh, anyway it's already pinned so we cannot pin it but let's say if you want to pin some content which is not available uh, or pinned to your node so what you can do you can do just ipfs pin add and then you can give the content id so if i just give this content id it should say that you know this content was or the cid was pinned uh, uh, against our node now let's do uh, let's run some more commands and let's try to uh, see those commands in action so first the uh, the the command that i just want to show is is ipfs you know object or i think it's ipfs get object and we have to give the you know content id and this should show us how this uh, record is actually stored i think it's not ipfs get object rather it's ipfs object get so i have to just alter this command and here you can see that it's showing you the data that was stored against this record and uh, it, 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 it has a link array as well where if your data is stored in multiple chunks then it will be done through the help of these links so ipfs will if, if if you have larger files then ipfs will try to chunk your data into multiple some multiple small files and then it will try to store them in the in the node okay now let's do one more thing let's try to you know remove some of the pins that were there so to list all the pins we were running the command this command ipfs pin ls and let's say i just want to remove this pin uh, so we had a pin for uh, for this particular you know cid so let's try to remove this so i can do ipfs pin rm 
and if I pass this content ID, it should say that it's unpinned. Let's try to verify this. If I do IPFS pin ls, that should go away. So I think that was ending with JFO. Let's see if we have something like here. No. So I think that uh, record was unpinned successfully. And uh, uh, yeah. So now let's try to uh, see one more command. So I just want to show you like the uh, one more command which is you know manually cleaning up the, uh, the garbage collector. So there is this command which is IPFS IPFS repo GC which will do the garbage cleaning of your IPFS repo that is there locally. It has unpinned all the IPFS uh, CIDs or the content that was unpinned. So this is what I wanted to show in this video and in upcoming videos we will try to set up an IPFS cluster or rather we can call it as a private IPFS cluster where we will having our own nodes which will be forming a IPFS cluster and please stay tuned to the channel and if you have any doubts or any queries feel free to drop them into the comment box or you can find the links to reach out to me and by the time please like this video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.